so I mentioned he had uh, he had a very positive and then negative relationship with Gore Vidal. There is a very interesting video of him introducing and having a talk with Gore Vidal about American imperialism on YouTube. I highly suggest everybody check that out. I think, uh, in a way, Gore Vidal and like if you mix Christopher Hitchens' internationalism with everything else about Gore Vidal, because Gore Vidal was, uh, I think. He was perfect in every way, except he was a tiny bit, in my view, was an isolationist. But I think you like these two people in my they're my gods in terms of intellectual capabilities and uh, writing a style even and all that. So besides the content, even the styles of these two people, I really love. So I highly suggest viewing that video. He did a very he did a couple of interesting debates with the. Uh, uh, firebrand, controversial British politician George Galloway. George Galloway is a Scottish politician who does a program on RT, I think now, and he's been elected to the, as a member of the parliament for the Labour Party, as well as for his own party, Respect Party, which uh, supported a lot of Muslim rights, and he got a lot of support from Muslim community in London, in UK, and uh, stuff. He, he's had a, he's another very interesting, controversial figure very strong Scottish accent and he uh, you know he uh, d does a lot of programs about uh, he's very anti-American empire, uh, empire he has been prone to publicity stunts as well he went on Big Brother UK and did a couple of really 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 embarrassing things but besides that I he's a very interesting character and in terms of like foreign policy stuff. I think he's somebody people should check out as well, although he's, in my view, too, too lefty, liberally, sort of la di da, da oh, the minorities, and oh, for my taste, for my taste, but overall, very good critic of uh, American Empire, and he, they did a couple of debates which were quite interesting uh, about uh, Iraq war, and uh, with uh, Hitchens defending the Iraq war, uh, the invasion of Iraq, and Galloway uh, obviously criticizing it, he uh, he did it. He he did a debate with Chris Hedges, which was the focus was religion, uh, but uh, it's a very interesting debate, but not a very good one in my view because I feel like they're debating like parallel to each other. They're like Hitchens is debating against. Christian right and Chris Hedges is arguing against fanaticism as a whole. So they're just arguing against two different things. Although, like Chris, it's interesting. Chris Hedges is somebody who I probably agree with more when it comes to policies than Christopher Hitchens, foreign policy and domestic policy. But like ideologically or intellectually, I definitely agree more with Hitchens. So that was very interesting to me because Chris Hedges is somebody who believe who has Christian values to an extent. But I like in policy wise and in like in practice, I agree with Chris Hedges probably more. But interestingly, intellectually, I think Christopher Hitchens is more right. I, I and I think Christopher Hitchens never understood this. Something that I don't understand that how can somebody believe in magical stuff? And then uh, be correct in other political yeah. stuff. But, I mean, you know, I think Chris Hedges so... has a very minor religious aspect to it, and but, like he says that he's the he's the son of a. I mean, it comes from his background. He, he was the son uh, of a past, of a major he, pastor. He went to I school think, uh, to exactly become uh, a pastor or something. Pastor. But then after that, I think. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, think yeah. he has a very, very minor religious no, no. aspect I mean, to it and how far no. it, it goes really right now, I'm not sure. No, not just Chris Hedges. I think he's just the fact that why he couldn't, he would get so animated and he would get, like he couldn't uh, reconcile, and I still can't reconcile sometimes, that you have these people who are of belief in God or religion and all that, and at the same time they are genuinely very... Uh, let's say, even very pragmatic about foreign policy or very, uh, you know, they have very rational views. So it's just something that is, it's hard to, re for me and for some people, it's hard to reconcile. But that was an interesting debate, not a, not a good one, but mm. to great people that I like. 
uh, are in, well, uh, are involved in that. He had a lot of talks with Sam Harris and the new atheists. I with the Richard Dawkins ones are very interesting, and they are fantastic because they are talk about anything from uh, English literature to atheism and all that in a very fascinating way. Sam Harris ones are less interesting in my view because it's just as we mentioned in our other video, it just gets into hypotheticals about philosophy and. It's uh, yeah, I, I'm not too big of a fan, but uh, yet yeah, there is a wealth of content on him online. People should check out. He wrote a number of fantastic books, as well as uh, you know, not so fantastic books. But uh, the I would say he's one of his most interesting works. I would. But say sorry, is, before the books, before the books, I want to just ask about his brother. So with his brother, they also had debates, right? Oh. Sorry, like yeah, yeah, I forgot YouTube, about that. Like debates that are up on YouTube and everything. Yes, yes, they had a... Yeah, he disagreed with his brother on a number of issues. His brother was a, uh, was a religious person, uh, but he was very much anti-religion. His brother was a... Uh, his brother was... His brother is a classical Eurosceptic, uh, very anti-Euro, and he was very pro-Euro and pro-European Union and was a big fan of the fact that you could have a freedom of movement. Again, in my view, showing his internationalism above his leftism, because the left in the UK originally was very anti-EU in the 70s, when he was pro-EU, because the left viewed EU as a sort of as a organization that is institutionalizing uh, uh, capitalist uh, norms and capitalist policies, right? So yeah, they had uh, major disagreements. The, I think uh, even... On Iraq war, they disagreed. Peter Hitchens was uh, in his isolationism. He was very suspicious of Iraq war. And uh, yeah, they debated these issues significantly. Oh, I, uh, besides Peter Hitchens, which, by the way, Peter Hitchens is an interesting character. I, I'm not a fan of any of his views, but at least, again, when you listen to him, you do think he's not trying to sell you something and it's his genuine view and there is a consistency in his view. Like he's not on, he, he, yeah, it, it feels like he's consistent on everything, at least to me. Uh, besides that, I would uh, definitely uh, just, I'm, this is, I'm going to segue into his work now. But sorry, I just I had one more question before you did that sure, too. Sure. I don't think, we didn't talk too much about Chomsky, right? So you mentioned he was kind of friends with Chomsky too. And then did they get into any debates or just a little touch on uh, that quickly? I, 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 they didn't do debates. Uh, yeah, he, they were very friendly. I think they, there are videos of them when they were friendly. But I think after Rock War, he, I, yeah, he basically wrote articles. Uh, Gore Vidal and Chomsky both criticized the Rock War. And he wrote articles basically um, attacking them. Uh, saying that they don't understand the situation and they don't, you know, they're wrong on the, you know, evidence and all that. Gore Vidal uh, had very briefly in an interview responded by making a, a snark comment about Hitchens and saying that, you know, blah, blah, blah. But uh, uh, I don't think Chomsky ever responded in a major way. Chomsky had a major, a major uh, sort of a major discussion argument with sam harris i don't know yeah, if you I know remember about that, that but they were like emails and back and forth right emails, I remember, yeah, like, yeah, but chomsky is very chomsky yeah, was, uh, but yeah hitch very, was sorry his name harris was just again on his hypothetical since if i remember correctly and i'm not against yeah. philosophy or anything like that it's just that those are the tools that you use in a particular uh, style of philosophy in a particular branch of philosophy and in politics mm -hmm. and stuff you have all these real things that you can point out and real examples but. sure sure uh no no uh, i would definitely agree with you there but i would say uh, like uh, uh, hitchens never if you read the emails with sam harris he, i mean chomsky is very dismissive of these yeah. people in a way like and uh, yeah i don't think he ever responded to, you know i have i haven't but also oh, imagine maybe, at the maybe, age of 80, maybe, like maybe. at the age of 80, you have somebody talking shit. You're just like, just shut up <laughs> talking to you because these happened like 10 years ago and Chomsky was already like 82 years old. 
All right. No, actually, if I might be mistaken, though. I think he did respond in an article and saying that in this, yeah, he did. Re- he wrote an article in response saying that, I, I mean, uh, he didn't respond directly to all his stuff. And he mm-hmm. said he just said that this is a childish argument and this is not the way to do this and stuff. So, um, yeah, that's from okay. what I recall. All right. all right. So you were going to segue to his books and stuff, I think. Oh yeah, that's what I uh, because I wanted to say that uh, the I mean part of my segue is going to be these were the people he had debates with and he had relations with. There were people he really uh, attacked. Uh, one of them was Henry Kissinger, I mentioned, uh, and really focused on them. Another one was were Clintons, uh, and I think both cases he did a fantastic jobs and. Uh, he also did, in my view, a great documentary about, for example, the madness that took over UK and the US about Princess Diana's death. And mm-hmm. he said that this like, was not as big a deal for a lot of people in Britain and uh, this cult image that is being created uh, is, not, uh, is not related to reality uh, of Princess Diana's life. He, he attacked Mother Teresa uh, correctly, in my view, for her really nefarious activities in India, his, her religious uh, fanaticism, her, uh, you know, her probably her so-called hospitals in India were responsible for more deaths than uh, really helping people. So uh, he he was very much. I, that's again another thing I liked about him. Something I like about, for example, Jimmy Dore, that you know he put the responsibility on the people that are doing things and that are in positions of power. And he never held, again, that's why I was very disappointed. Like he did the same to Gore Vidal and Chomsky. And I don't think they were in any position of power or in any, they had any responsibility of, of anything. And But people like Mother Teresa Clinton's, uh, to a lesser extent, Diana, she wasn't responsible for the media frenzy after her death. So I don't want to be unfair or anything. But yeah, he was very much, he would go to write at the matter. I think he even criticized Dalai Lama to, uh, for but, some sorry, of his Sorry, who is Mother stuff. Teresa? I'm not too, <laughs> too familiar Mother with Ter- Yeah. Oh, Mother Teresa, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Cam, but Mother Teresa, it's like, you know, they say, don't, pre- like, it's even a saying, like, don't pretend yeah, to be Mother I've heard of that, so I didn't know it was a real person or something. <laughs> Oh, it was so a, she was a Catholic nun who went to India. She was, I think, originally from actually uh, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia. Oh, okay. some, I thought some... she was a biblical figure or something. <laughs> She's no man. She was. A, she got the Nobel Peace Prize in oh, which, okay. yeah, and in which in the speech she said, uh, "Don't abort your kids because abortion is murder." You know, uh, she was a yeah. She was one of those figures oh, that. Wow. Is made. She's made. She's viewed as a sort of a, a god of virtue, and uh, she's be, been made a saint by. By the way, by yeah. Vatican. So I've heard of all these. That's why I thought she was like some kind of biblical figure. I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, you know, she's well. She kind of maybe. I, maybe in a hundred years they would <laughs> call her on. But yeah, he, he, I would highly suggest reading his articles on her, uh, his uh, content, his, a couple of interviews about her. Uh, he uh, he's let's now because that's why I wanted. I thought this is a good say, segue for um, his books. Listen, because, son, I'm proud uh, of my uh, ignorance. Okay, I wear my ignorance on my sleeves. So you can... no, <laughs> it's just it's a very weird because you know like about let's say palace. You, you know a lot about if a lot you of, haven't heard I, about it, you haven't heard about it. Listen, you hear about one thing, you don't uh, hear about another thing. You don't you don't know fair about enough, it. Fair enough. No, you knew about Olivia Wilde, but Mother Teresa. Was well, of too course, rough. she's like an actor. <laughs> she's no, someone Mother you see Teresa everywhere. I've like heard saying... of Mother Teresa too, but I told you I thought she was a biblical like cartoon figure or something. I know, it's, but I I know, but it's like you you know I don't like or follow football, right? But if you tell me Lionel Messi, I know he's a real person. I don't think he's an imaginary character. But... You know, well, anyways, anyways, this is it. Next this time we'll talk, talk about that. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, this next time, no, this in our production meeting, we're going to talk more about it. <laughs> but you know, uh, I, I would highly suggest, um, yeah, he, he has a great, uh, uh, he, he's a very 
famous book is um, Trial of Henry Kissinger. That's a great book. Uh, no One Left to Lie, The Triangulation of William Jefferson Clinton. That's a great book to read. Letters to a Young Contrarian. That's an interesting book to read, especially if you're at uni and you still haven't found your place. Uh, that, some people uh, call that his, uh, like his swan song, you know, his best book, you know, mm-hmm. some people have argued. Hitch 22 is interesting because it's more, it's a bit of an autobiography thing. I, uh, I read that. I found that interesting. Uh, uh, I haven't read Why Orwell Matters, but I have read some of his articles that he, he's a very big fan of George Orwell and his writing. And George Orwell was also a journalist who was also fought in the Spanish, you know, uh, war and all that. So he sort of, he felt a bit of, I think, uh, sympathy and empathy with him. So, but I, I would uh, highly suggest uh, his articles at the Nation before the Iraq War, mostly. But even his uh, uh, oh, uh, this this was what I was looking for. The pamphlet uh, he has this great pamphlet, Karl Marx and the Paris Commune. That's a great one, and this is the one about uh, uh, the Mother Teresa, the missionary position, Mother Teresa in theory and practice as the name suggests you can see he always liked to you know make fun of them as well so the missionary position because mother teresa was a missionary (laughs) um uh, oh uh, the the book he contributed to a co-editor with edward said blaming the victims very interesting and fantastic book about the palestinian question so that's an interesting one uh if you're interested in atheism and stuff, uh, I would suggest the probable, uh, the sorry, the, pro, the portable atheist essential readings for non-believers. That's an interesting one. Um, uh, I would say uh, to take a look at. Uh, so yeah, uh, these, these are some. I'm curious about yeah. I'm curious I, about the Clinton stuff a bit. So like, what's the Clinton stuff about a little bit? The book, just like a. Oh, uh, the the Clinton stuff. What's it about? It's about that uh, uh, his uh, war records mostly, mm-hmm. and the Lewinsky scandal. Okay. That, these are the two main focuses of the book, as well as uh, do you know about the Clinton triangulation policy that? They uh, uh, basically they try to. Uh, this is the policy of the new left or whatever you want to call them that they try to uh, steal the voters from the right by you know uh, by outflanking the right on mm-hmm. certain issues and uh, you know separating themselves from the hard left. But I would say the Clinton stuff is mostly focused on his uh, on his uh, Lewinsky scandal as well as his war record. Uh, yeah, and that's interesting. You were saying he was one of the only people back then, kind of, at least, with his profile and everything, defending Lewinsky. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. At, at that time, he was one of the very few people that was doing that. Uh, and uh, to be and oh, by the way, he does also discuss his corruptions as well, because Clinton was heavily corrupt both in Arkansas and when he comes to presidency. I, I think he even goes as far as calling it, calling Republic, uh, calling uh, Clinton's administration a banana republic, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is, you know, fair enough, yeah. I think. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, these are, the, he has a lot of, he, he, there is a collection of his essays called, uh, if I'm not mistaken, let me check, called, I think, uh, Love, poverty, and war journeys and essays. That's an interesting one. I would, if you, uh, that's published in 2004, and that's his articles from the nation. So I highly suggest those uh, if you want to read his work. But uh, I would uh, suggest watching a lot of his stuff as well, his BBC documentaries, that type of thing, because I think he was somebody who was, uh, you know, he, you, you need his tone play the important part yeah, yeah. In, in the perception you have of him and um, yeah that's these are some of the works that by him I suggest 
I said I mentioned this book a couple of times, Unhinged, Unhitched, but sorry, uh, by uh, Richard Seymour. I think that's a great book to read if you want to read a critique of Christopher Hitchens. I haven't read uh, much uh, books, to be honest, uh, uh, of you know uh, about him other than that. Like because a lot of stuff about him are you know uh, are uh, religious uh, extremists criticizing him for his critique yeah. of religion. So uh, I haven't read good criticisms of Hitchens that much, but there are some uh, I, uh, there are some good criticism of him uh, by Gore, I think by Gore Vidal, uh, by other left wing people who criticize his position after war in Iraq War. So I think you should check them out for sure. Um, yeah, that's that's my. Uh, two cents on his output i suppose no great stuff beautiful so i guess we did we pretty much cover every, everything you wanted to talk about we want to talk about concerning uh, yeah, yeah there are two uh, things i just want to uh, i just wanted to do a short segment about his legacy but before that i would say one major thing i by the way disagreed with uh, hitchens was his uh, he was a republican in a british sense that mm -hmm. he was anti-monarchy and he called for their abolition that I personally disagreed with. So I don't, again, necessarily agree with him a, a lot of times, but again, still I think a writer worth looking into. And <clears throat> in terms of his legacy, I think it's sad that he's been boxed into this caricature that he was this lefty that, oh, something happened that he moved to the right. I think he was beyond that and he was better than that to be honest although i do think some of his own uh, works didn't help his case yeah i was gonna say i mean it's a bit of his own doing though no I, he's a bit responsible I, for that i mean when he became when he's at the think, peak of his fame which i guess is not his fault but at the peak of his fame the most important issue of the time the iraq war those were the positions no, no, I, I, that he took I, and defended I think it's mostly the fault of the short attention span of the people. People don't have the ability to fall. Like, people can support uh, support the same policy for different reasonings mm -hmm. and different uh, based on different values. And even if you sometimes disagree with the, their support of a policy, you can understand that. And I think it's mostly to do with that. And I don't, I don't think he, I do think he made a couple of mistakes, like defending Bush in an interview with Bill Maher. But I don't think, uh, I think if you read his work, most of the time he was being very clear why and how he supported. Yeah, well, uh, fair enough. Sure. The, the, that's my, say, too, so I'm very sad about the fact that he's been basically always now caricatured as this person who was, uh, uh, you know, left winger who basically betrayed the left and moved mm -hmm. to the right. Worse than that, I am sad that he's just been characterized as a contrarian, kind of like Gore Vidal sometimes. Mm -hmm. He was not just a contrarian, he actually had views. And you see that Bill Maher did this thing. You remember, I don't know if you recall that awful human being, Milo Yanulopoulos, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the perverted. By the way, he's he now he has turned to Christianity after being gay and finding the yeah, and I finding mean. that it's okay after having relation with underage kids. Now he's turned to Christianity. Uh, I mean, if, you know, a huckster, uh, somebody who is basically trying to sell, you know. And then Bill Maher had him on as you know, Bill Maher has these people on to prove that he. Oh, I have debate with everybody. Uh, good for you. Uh, <laughs> and in that, he, at the end of that interview, he says that, oh, I see a young Christopher Hitchens in you. Wow. And it's just, wow. I, he, like, broke my heart. Really. I mean, how? Not, Why? <laughs> because because he, I guess because of the aggressive style of talking, perhaps. Or because usually Hitchens would disagree with most people. I don't think he was necessary. I mean, he did write a book called Letters to a Young Contrarian. And I don't think he 
I hated being contrary to others, but I don't think he was somebody like Ben Shapiro or uh, Dave Rubin or you know, a lot of police uh, are mispronouncing. But I mean, if, name. if if he's gonna say that about him, you can say that about like you know half the population. <laughs> a lot of people Russian. are are contrary and stuff like that. You know, that's even if you thought that well, was. I, I, I mean, uh, he was British too. So they had a similar accent, so yeah, that was the, the. And Sam Harris also as well. Sam Harris in his podcast. And in his writing, sometimes he says, as good my friend Hitchens would have said, or that. And I don't think Sam Harris really understands. Like just <laughs> yeah. I, even I, I genuinely like even Sam Harris, and I agree yeah. with him on a lot of his stuff. I just really think he's out of his depth when he talks on a lot of issues. Because if you watch his debate with Cenk Uger, for example, I highly suggest you do. Uh, I genuinely think when he talks about that specific hypothetical situation, he's right. It's just he doesn't really understand that, that those hypothetical situations is not what we are talking about in politics. We are talking yeah. about completely different things. And uh, but you know that's again as as I always say, I sound very arrogant. It's just my way of talking. I hope you know doesn't you know I do realize all these people are far more educated educated and far more experienced than i am so take it or you know pr- probably it's better to leave it but if you can't take my views for what it's worth <laughs> but uh yeah I, that's that's what pisses me off about his legacy to an extent yeah. so i mean two that's things you would not... say one is that he's really associated with his whole iraq views and the other one maybe you weren't saying in this way but in my head he's been grouped in with of course with uh, sam harris and the whole atheism movement like just like kind of together even if they were different in so many ways sure not so much uh, group together with them but i hate that a lot of people new atheists and right wingers use him uh, and use his work for to promote themselves in a mm. way i think you know in my view like uh, it's they yeah I, I don't like that he's first of all if in the left, basically, they view him as this caricature that, oh, he was leftist while he was young and he became old and yeah. rich and he moved to the right. And on the right, they basically use uh, his good faith arguments to push forward completely idiotic and mm-hmm. bad faith okay. uh, policies. I got so, you. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I know we don't have a large audience or anything, but if, like, I thought maybe, uh, I just hope his legacy can be somewhat... Uh, revived and or maybe looked at in a more holistic way Mm -hmm. no definitely and i mean he had he had what like one or two decades worth of work before the whole iraq war and and no oh he's been active since 1970s early 70s so he had four decades of like writing three decades you know yeah oh sorry yeah three decades. yeah brilliant okay anything else to add, to add. No, no, I just, uh, please, uh, if you like this kind of t- type of content as well, because this is somewhat different from our typical news type of a story, it, please let us know in the comment or whatever, in however way you like, uh, so we do more of them. Or if you don't like, let us know as well, so we don't do as many of them either. I, By the way, I, I mean, I hope... Maybe we can have somewhat of a lively debate in the comment section yeah, if I'm, because I'm sure I missed a lot of criticisms of Hitchens because I am such a big fan, and uh, but I just try to give a overall view that is not fair, but it's definitely my view, and yeah, take. Yeah, I mean, so many hopefully. people know so much about him, so hopefully our videos will reach one or two of them. And they yeah, can leave exactly. some comments. Oh, the Seinfeld thing earlier on I was saying is oh, yeah, <laughs> when, yeah, you were t- <laughs> when you were talking about how he found out about his Jewish heritage, it just reminds me of the episode of Seinfeld with the super famous actor now. So I just Bra- looked Brian up his name, Krasny. Brian Crass, the, the actor from Breaking Bad, but he was a dentist in Seinfeld and he was Christian and then he converts to Judaism and he immediately starts making all these Jewish jokes. And of course, Jerry Seinfeld is like, he doesn't like it and he's on his case and he thinks that he just converted <laughs> for the jokes. So it's just like hilarious. Yeah, that's a great episode. I mean, the whole any episode with the dentist is great, but I love the I love that episode and 
Um, but, uh, but to be honest, I would say what, it is kind of true because I do that. Like I, I my ethnic backgrounds from my mom and dad side are different ethnicities in Iran, yeah. and I do use them. And I have no connections mm-hmm. with those ethnic backgrounds. By the way, I don't speak the language. I never lived in those cities. I visited the cities. That's about it. But I use them to be able to make jokes of those ethnic groups. So I think, yeah, it's a uh, it's a common strategy to try to basically sort of you know slip into ethnic group just to be able to make jokes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, openly yeah. talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that's uh, fine. Okay, Sam, this was really really great. So please, people, leave your comments, criticism, suggestions, everything in the comment section, and hopefully, if there's if there are a bunch, we can address them like we've done a few other times with some other topics. But yeah, otherwise, thank yeah. you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you in our next video, huh, Sam? Yeah, hopefully. Unless somebody, you know, doesn't really like, doesn't like my uh, my praise of Christopher Hitchens and assassinates me. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay, so, unless that happens. <laughs> yeah, but okay. Like and subscribe. Yes, please. Thank you and take care.